Hi guys, Olive here, here today to review two YA books that I recently read and loved. First is called The Light at the Bottom of the World by London Shaw. It was published in 2019 by Disney Hyperion, and the hardcover comes in at 320 pages. This is a debut work that imagines that nearly the entire Earth's surface has been flooded by water, and humans now live an underwater existence amid the dangers of the deep. In addition to all the sea creatures that are down there with them, there are also these mechanical, human-like creatures called anthropoids that regularly attack human settlements. Our heroine is a teenage Muslim girl named Layla McQueen living in the underwater version of London. A matter of months ago, her father was arrested on what seems like false charges, and ever since that point she's been trying to get more information about his whereabouts and about his situation, totally in vain, and by the point that we meet her, she is running out of options. So she decides to enter this government-sponsored, submergible sea vessel race, knowing that if she is selected at random to be a participant and then goes on to win the thing, her prize can be anything her heart desires, and she plans to ask for her father's freedom. The rest of the plot pretty much branches off of that event, so I can't tell you much more about it without spoiling that, but I can tell you that this book is full of adventure and bravery. It's full of deep fear, but also questioning what you've been told your whole life. There are a lot of fears that the population has about living underwater, since when we open this book, it's still a relatively new thing that humans have been doing, and there's this general hope that someday humans will be able to return to the surface and continue the normal existence that they had lived prior to this event. But as Layla starts to dig deeper into the mystery of her father, she starts to unravel some other misconceptions that she didn't even realize that she had and her entire worldview begins to reorient. Though Layla could certainly be a frustrating character at times, she has got that trademarked teenage, no, I know what's best for me thing going on. She is so dedicated to her father. She's willing to do just about anything she needs to do to get him back, including putting herself in danger. The world in this book is so imaginative and the author writes it incredibly vividly. It's kind of like the underwater worlds of the video game Bioshock, meets the technology of Xenon Girl of the 21st century. But even with the fantasy elements, this world is rooted in things that feel very human. People are extremely nostalgic for the world they used to live in, our world, what they call the old world. And all the political things that you learn are going on feel like things that would really happen if we all were forced underwater. I have to say that I've never read anything quite like this before, and I thought it was so well done. I was thrilled to learn that this is the first book in a duology, and the second one is going to be released sometime in 2020. I will absolutely be picking it up. And the second book I'd like to talk to you about in this video is another debut called Woven in Moonlight by Isabelle Ibanez, which was published in 2020 by Page Street, and this hardcover comes in at 375 pages. This book was inspired by Bolivian history, culture, and politics. We see right at the start of the book that our heroine is the leader of an outcasted community of people. She is the queen, the condesa, of the illustrians who who were violently forced out of the capital of Incasisa called La Ciudad Blanca. Unbeknownst to most people, although we as readers find this out pretty much immediately, our main character, Jimena, is not the actual Condesa. She's a decoy. She was chosen as a child to impersonate the last remaining illustrian royal, Catalina, because of the strong resemblance that they have. The hope of everyone who knows this secret is that having this decoy, this stand-in, Jimena, will help keep the real Condesa safe. And then one day comes where the group of outcasts get visitors from La Ciudad. These are messengers of the false king, Atok, leader of the Loxans. He demands that the Condesa come to the city and accept his hand in marriage. And although this may sound like a peace offering, Jimena knows it for what it actually is, and it spells trouble. So per usual, she plays the part of the Condesa and heads off to the city. How she's going to avoid actually marrying this tyrant, she doesn't quite know yet. But what she does know is that she plans to use her magical ability to weave moonlights into beautiful woolen tapestries, to deliver messages visible only to fellow illustrians, to spies within the city that will hopefully then make their way back to the real Catalina. In addition to 
this, and in the time before the wedding, she's hoping to locate the ancient ruin that Atok used to seize power many years ago. She's hoping to now use it against him and reclaim the throne for her queen. But locating this thing is difficult, and she's not likely to get help from anyone in the city, considering that her people, the Illustrians, and the people currently in power, the Loxans, are mortal enemies. She is somewhat hoping that the infamous masked vigilante El Lobo will spontaneously show up and provide some assistance, or even just a distraction. I absolutely loved this book. I thought the world building was extremely impressive. There's so much history and lore behind the story, and it's presented in a very well-paced, non-info dumpy way, we're learning alongside Jimena about the initial uprising that saw the Illustrians removed from power. And just like in The Light at the Bottom of the World, our main character realizes that there's a lot that she didn't previously know about, there's a lot she didn't previously understand. I really loved how both of these books subtly encouraged their audiences to question all of those things that they take as given by showing their main characters doing it. The inclusion of Bolivian culture in this book made it so vibrant. The food writing, first of all, is scrumptious, and the parts that talk about Jimena's weaving really do have a magic to them. Jimena absolutely loves to weave. She kind of loses herself in it the way that we all get lost in books. I was so interested in the tapestry weaving element of this book that I ended up looking up YouTube videos of women weaving tapestries, and I can see how you would totally lose yourself in it. It is mesmerizing just to watch. I think you, as I did, will feel a very similar sensation with this book because the writing just surrounds you with this world. I personally love when an author will include just as part of the text words in a foreign language, and they will not immediately define what those words mean in English. It's kind of this look it up or don't, but it is part of this story. The author uses Spanish words throughout this book, and I was having a ton of fun looking them up. It made me feel so much closer to the characters, like hearing words in a language that these characters would actually be using. It made them feel closer to me. And just in case she wasn't talented enough already, the author of this book also designed this gorgeous cover. And also like the previous book, The Light at the Bottom of the World, this world is getting a second installment. There are plans for a sequel, although I don't think it's due to be released until 2021. Both of these books I highly recommend. You'll know if you watch a lot of videos here on my channel that I don't pick up a ton of YA. I tend to be a little bit particular about the YA that I do pick up, and let me tell you, neither one of these disappointed. Please let me know if you've read either of these books, if you've heard of either of them, or especially if you'd like to read either one after hearing me talk about them in this video. You can put that or any other more general comments or questions you may have down in the comment section below, but if you'd prefer to find me somewhere other than YouTube, I am on a variety of different places on social media, and the links to all of my profiles will be in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you're having a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.